Okay, this is a, a uh, flip-flop circuit, and we're going to trace through it. Uh, forgive my handwriting. Um, I have to do this upside down. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set this value to 1. So we're going to put a 1 on the D line. Remember, D stands for input. And then to turn, activate the circuit to say we're working with this particular flip-flop, we're going to set clock to 1. In other applications, we might say clock is select, or um, uh, later on we'll discover that clock also may be substituted for chip select. But no, it's just a way of saying we're working with this circuit right here. Okay, So we get a 1 coming in here, and then we get a 1 coming in here. So you follow that line, you follow this line, we get a 1 coming in here. Now we come down here to this line, and this piece right here, this is an inverter. See the little circle there? That means it's a buffer that changes the sign. So it comes in as a 1, and it comes out as a 0. Oops, 0. Okay, so let's look at these. These things here, these are AND gates. Remember, if both values are 1, then the output is 1. If either value is 0, then the output is 0. So let's look at this. 0 and 1, the output of that is 0. 1 and 1, the output of this is 1. Easy enough, we transfer those values here. Well now, looking at our AND gates here, these are a little more complicated because what happens is the output of this one comes back and becomes the input of this one. And the output of this one comes back and becomes the input of this one. So we can't really tell what the value is until we know, we can't tell the value of this one until we know the value of that one, right? Well, what happens in the actual circuit is it bounces around for a while. And it takes a little time for what they call the circuit to settle, which means that it comes to decision on uh, what its value is going to be because it's kind of a uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, uh, it, it's, it's circular. It's a circular reference. Um, but we, we can figure this out because we know that any, any, any AND gate with a zero in it, the output is going to be zero. Because even if there's a one here, one and zero, the output is going to be zero. And if there's a zero on the top here, the output is also going to be zero. So we know that the output going out is going to be zero. But look at this guy. Remember this, this little circle? This means that it's inverted. So whatever signal comes out here is going to be a 1, no matter what, and that's because this is a 0. So we know that's a 1 going in here, right? Well, 1 and 1 going out, that's going to be a 1, but look, it's inverted, so we get a 0. And a 0 comes in here, 0, 0, 1. So we know that Q, which is our output, is 1, because we got the 1 out there. And then not Q, which is the inverse of our output, which is useful in some applications, but we're going to ignore it for memory. But it's here, and we might as well set it, the negative of Q or not Q is 0. So Q is 1 and not Q is 0. So what happens is we put the 1 in along with the clock and we set Q to 1 and not Q to 0. Now what's interesting about this circuit is that this value will continue to come out as 1 even if we disconnect these or set these both to 0. Um, and you can trace through the circuit and see that that's true because there's, no, there's going to be a, a 0 here because um, this is 0, so this is 0, this is 0, this is 1, 0 and 1 is 0. This is going to be a 0 input again, so that will always be 1, and this always ends up being the opposite, even when these are both set to 0 or turned off. So that's why they call it a flip-flop, or sometimes they call it a latch, because once you set the value, or once you, you start to set the value, it flip-flops back and forth here, really fast, and then it will lock in on something, so uh, or latch, like a gate. So some call it a latch. Um, I think that's not the accurate term for this circuit, but it comes pretty close. And a flip-flop because these flip-flop back and forth before they settle on a um, ultimate uh, value. Okay, let's, that's setting a value to 1. Setting a value to 0 is almost the exact same thing. So D coming in, D, remember, is our input. We set that to 0. And we set our clock to 1. Remember, the clock to 1 says, I'm working with this circuit. Turn it on. Let's transfer these values over. This is 0 here. And there's a 1 here, we follow this. There's a 1 there. Now the 0 goes down, goes through our, remember, this is a negator or a negative buffer. So it's a 0 here and it becomes a 1 here. Okay, well, it's easy enough. 0 and 1 in this AND gate is a 0 coming out. 1 and 1 in this AND gate is a 1 coming out. So we get a 1 for the input here and a 0 for the input here. Now, once again, um, the actual circuit will toggle back and forth. Uh, rapidly, trying to because it needs this reference to that, to that, to that. It goes back and forth really quick before it settles or it um, uh, 
Yeah, it settles on an answer. Um, it stabilizes. There's, there's fancier words for this. Um, but once again, we can look at this and say the zero here, well, no matter what this value is right here, um, zero and something else, no matter what it is, is going to be zero coming out here. But look, there's an inverter. So the value coming out is actually going to be one. So if we have a one and one going in here, because we have one from the bottom one and a one from the top one, it means a one coming out, but oh, that inverter is going to make it zero. So we set it to zero, and Q gets set to zero, and not Q is set to one, which is the exact opposite of what we had up here, right? And once again, when we set these both to zero, the values stay the same. They're locked in. Now this differs from the leaky memory because these stay the same even if we disconnect this side. Um, and we don't have to do anything, as long as power gets maintained to this entire circuit, we don't have to do anything with refilling capacitors or anything like that. So that's how it works out really slick. That is a flip-flop.